Good morning, everyone, uh, or afternoon or evening, uh, depending on when you're watching this video. Uh, I'm Josh Gatewood. And I'm Kevin Vanover. And today we're going to continue with our Intune Barbershop. Today we're talking about one of everybody's favorite topics, updates. <laughs> Yay! Right. Um, so, so with Intune, there's the Windows update for business. And so we're just going to demystify some of the things around it because uh, updates is one of those things that happens all the time, like once a month. Uh, sometimes if there's like an out of band update, a little bit more. Um, but specifically, we're going to dive into Intune uh, with Windows updates for the quality updates in today's video. All right, so with the quality updates, uh, there is the Windows update flow. Uh, so you can set up the uh, Intune quality update rings to where it can actually defer uh, before it starts installing. And then you can have a deadline uh, and then have like a restart option for your end users. Uh, so that's super helpful so that, you know, Patch Tuesday comes out and all of your stuff updates that day. Uh, instead, you can have it like more of like scheduled and control the complete update flow allow you to like test updates and uh, get a little bit more granular with that. So this diagram, uh, it just kind of like shows how you, you defer updates and then when it's time it starts to install and then you have a deadline to where it would actually like force the reboot and you can have a grace period to where uh, the end user can get a notification before it's a uh, reboot schedule. All right, so this is basically like what the toast notification will look like for the end user uh, to where it's be like, hey, you want to do this now or another time. Um, and then eventually after the grace period expires, it's just gonna be like, sorry, we gave you a chance. Now we're going to reboot. Uh, and this is like, I like, uh, I like charts, right? So this kind of like shows <laughs> how like the uh, uh, reporting and processing and diagnostic data happens for the for the device because um, everything happens it's like it's all cloud based so it goes directly out to uh, Microsoft to pull down these updates so no worry about like branch caching and WSUS and uh, pulling the updates for here and downloading the updates and putting them on the server and getting it from that so um, this just kind of you know automatically happens in the cloud. Right, so uh, instead of like talking about the process, uh, what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna dig into the portal and I'm gonna turn it over to you, Kevin, so we can build out a policy. Awesome, I will share my screen and I will help you uh, walk you through building out a policy for uh, Windows Update for Business for a monthly update ring. All right, so let me know when you can see my screen there. Yep, it's live. All right, okay, we'll just go ahead and we'll give this a, a name. So we're gonna call this a pilot update Ring for Intune Barber Shop. There we go. Yay. All right. So going into the next thing. Okay. So a lot of settings in here. And if you're not familiar with this, it can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, and if you're coming from updates that were done on premises or, you know, using some other solution, um, sometimes those policies are still with your clients. And so a, a nice little tool that you can use to do some client side troubleshooting um, is called RSOP. So you literally just, you know, go down into your start context and you just type RSOP and that will then you know, bring up a little client output and it'll show you what policies are applied and then you can find the GPOs or whatever policies may be applied to your client so that, you know, if you're trying to figure out why the updates that we can figure here aren't making it down to your devices, when you look at Intune reporting, you will likely find the culprit there and then you can go and troubleshoot that um, from the other solution uh, and try to remove it from the devices or device. So just wanted to point that out. Okay, so running through this real quickly, you have your update settings. So this is where you're gonna get your Microsoft product updates. So this is going to be, you know, your CVEs, your Patch Tuesday kind of stuff. Um, Windows drivers is just that. It's not the OEM drivers, it's Windows drivers that are gonna go into the operating system. Now this is where you have deferral, but, but because we're doing a pilot ring, you wanna to try to keep that deferral period fairly low. So when the updates are made available to devices uh, from Intune, then, you know, it's going to wait that many days before it then makes that update download to the device. And then when you have uh, a production ring, that's when you would set the deferral period for quality updates to be a little longer. So maybe you push it out three to five days from when you do your pilot rings. And some organizations will break it down into three or four rings where they will just keep expanding um, until all of the production is done. Now, something that's important to note is that when you're doing a pilot, 
try to get a couple devices from different departments or different geographic locations where you're going to have different applications that may or may not be impacted by the Windows update process. So that's important to make sure that you have a good quality of different use cases, um, a quantity of different use cases uh, to apply your pilot update rings for. Because if something is broken, or something uh, isn't right after the updates, you can then go and pause your other rings so that they don't get installed. All right. Yep. No, that, when it that's, comes a good, that's, that's a good point, Kevin, because if it's all IT people, IT people is just going to fix it, right? Not tell yeah. anybody about it. So, right. Yeah. All right. My next favorite one here, uh, the feature update in the deferral period. A lot of times when I go in and I'm working with clients and we're setting this up, they yep. want to push the feature update out 365 days because they're, they don't want it to upgrade to the next version uh, or to Windows 11 or, or whatever's going on. And so they'll put this as quantity as high as they can get and they're okay with that. Um, and I always try to tell them, you don't need to do that. Really what you want this to be is zero. So we'll put the, you know, the update ring for the pilot ring, it will do a day or maybe two, we'll give it two. Um, but then we really want the feature update deferral to be zero. And the reason for that is, is that when you mark it as zero, it then allows you to go to the feature update blade within Intune where you have much more granular control over what version is going to get installed, when it gets installed, and this won't interfere with it. Now the feature update is still going to get installed, so you want to make sure that you connect those two pieces or close the loop on that. So always recommended here by us to do zero and then control the feature update through the feature update blade. So I wanted to make that very clear. All right. So we are not going to go ahead and do upgrade Windows 10 devices to the latest 11. You know, in our, we'll do that in testing in a separate ring. So always say no when you're trying to do this for your pilot production environment, so to speak. And then the feature update uninstall period while we're doing the feature update blade and we'll control that, this gives you this this setting still applies. So if you wanted to give yourself a few days in which you would be able to uninstall that, like my friend Josh here, he did the 24H2 this past week and it caused some problems for his production device. So he needed to basically either make the decision to roll it back or to figure out what was going on and fix the issues. Now he got through it because he's a smart guy, but your end users <laughs> might not have such luck. You know, they might yeah. not know what to do and they're just gonna be like, hands up, I, I can't work. You know, the network's card just doesn't want to work for me. So just be, you know, make sure you, you, you account for that. All right, pre-release builds. This is something also that you can enable in a test blade or in a test ring. Don't want to do that in your pilot production rings because then you can, you know, it just causes unwanted end user experiences and it's just not worth it. So always try to do that, you know, off to the side. Okay, user experience settings. This is where we're going to talk about the uh, install behavior and, and restarts. So the sort of rule of thumb is, you know, they just wanted to make sure that you had active hours. So when you do add a maintenance time, it's going to basically try to auto install the updates and, and do restarts outside of active hours, which you would define here. So currently it's saying eight to 5 PM. So at the active hours would actually be eight to five. And then the updates would try to install and restart the devices outside of those hours. I'm not a big fan of that because I like to have a little bit more control, but you know, to each his own, if you like it that way and you're okay with it and it works, that's fine. Go with it. But I normally will try to guide clients to install and restart at a scheduled time because then I can pick what week of the month that it's going to happen for this pilot ring. And then once I've, so say I wanted to do it on the second week on patch Tuesday. Okay, great. And then I can say what day I'm going to do it on Thursday because I told my deferral period to be two days. So that's when the updates are going to be made available to the devices. And I want it to install at whatever time I feel is convenient. So if it's something where I wanted to make the updates happen after business hours, then I'll just go down here and I'll say, okay, let's make it a couple hours after 5 p.m. And it's 5 p.m. on the local device time, not across the board. So if you had a multiple locations, it's gonna be 7 p.m. when the installs occur at that location on the device. Okay, now when doing pilot rings, pause updates, no, I'm not gonna let you do that. I'm gonna disable that. Turn when it you, off. When, yeah, when you're giving the users the option to check for updates, again, uh, yeah, I like to disable that because I want to make sure that it's within, the, you know, the time periods when I'm expecting there to be issues with updates. So make it your decision on that. You know, if you want to allow your users to just sort of get ahead of the game because you've got users that are sort of just out there and they're not on, you know, these uh, 
sort of, you know, in a office kind of situation and they're at home and, you know, they, or they work remotely, then maybe you want to give them that ability. That's completely up to you. But I typically, when I'm doing my pilot rings, I like to disable all of these things. I want it to install and I want to understand the results right now. So that's my take on that. All right. And then the change notification um, update level. This is what Josh was showing you in his slide. So if you wanted them to see all of the update notifications, hey, it's downloading, hey, it's installing, hey, I need to restart, then you just use the default. If you just wanted to exclude all of that except for the restart warnings, then that's what they would see. You pick that second one. And if you wanted to turn them all off so they don't see anything that just happens, you know, go yeah. for it. Yeah. <laughs> Users might not like you, but. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. And then the deadline settings. So this is where you have to turn it on and you have to say, auto reboot before the deadline. If you don't do these two things, then the devices could all, could be paused in, indefinitely. The user can pause it. I don't want to restart right now. I don't want to restart right now. And it just goes on and on and on and on. And then you never actually get the updates installed because sometimes a restart needs to occur. So you have the ability to set that within the feature updates. You can say, okay, I'll give you a day. And the, qual and the quality updates, your patch Tuesday stuff, maybe I'll give you a day. But, you know, because this is my pilot, I'm going to give you zero. I don't want you because it's a cumulative. So just know that if you deferred it up here for two days, that means that if it comes out on Tuesday, it's not going to be made available until Thursday. And that's when we're trying to install it. If you then give it a quality update deadline that extends another day, now you're looking at Friday or Saturday or whenever that that does occur. Just understand that it's a cumulative. And then the grace period, that is really meant for devices that are offline. Maybe somebody's on maternity leave, maybe somebody's on vacation, uh, it's a holiday, whatever it may be, the updates did not occur as scheduled. So this grace period is, you know, this is use. I'll, I'll do it one. When the device comes back online, I'm going to give you a day. And then I'm going to let you get caught up on all the things you missed, your emails, et cetera. But then the, the next day, I'm going to force this device to restart so the updates can get installed. So that's really what it's all about. Sir. Love it. Yeah, so basically with this ring, Kevin, t check check my math on this. Patch Tuesday comes out. Two days after that, the updates will be available. Mm -hmm. And then the second week of the month, which is generally Patch Tuesday, um, it's going to re install and reboot at 7 p.m. If it's off during that time, the grace period is going to kick in the next time it comes on. It's they've got a day to get it installed. Is that exactly right? Nice. Awesome. Yeah. So um, that's fantastic. Thanks for walking through this. Right. So this is like Windows updates. So it's a uh, through Intune, so cloud-based updates uh, allow you to manage your devices, and then uh, you can pick and choose to have different update rings. Like Kevin said, generally we set at least two, pilot and production, but sometimes more. Um, and then make sure if you use some of that pre-release builds, that that goes to a test group only. Uh, and again, the feature update deferral period days, set that at zero, always zero, always zero, always zero, because then you can control it. Because uh, feature updates is uh, how you can upgrade to Windows 11 and even go into the 24H2, which is something we'll talk about in another video. So good stuff, Kevin. Thanks for showing that. And yeah. thank you. Uh, thanks. Yeah, thanks for watching. And we'll uh, uh, we'll see y'all on the next one. Thank you.